Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So for all those who are watching this session for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So. Before moving on to question number one, let me tell you that in today's session, we will be covering the RBI's bi-monthly monetary policy, where the monetary policy committee has taken certain decisions with respect to our monetary policy. And I'll also be covering the statement on the development and regulatory policy. So what decisions have been taken in this regard? Now, rather than discussing the question first and then the policy, I'll first cover the entire monetary policy decision and the other decisions which have been taken as a, uh, as far as the statement on the development and regulatory policy is concerned and after discussing both of these statements we will then move on to the questions and try to answer them once you will be aware about what decisions have been taken in this regard you will be e you will easily be able to answer the questions that follow so let's get started now Talking about the monetary policy, recently a monetary policy committee review or a meeting was uh, uh, scheduled for June 2nd to June 4th and on June 4th the monetary policy committee came out with the decisions with respect to our monetary policy. So what kind of monetary policy stance are we going to maintain as per this very report? So if I talk about the current situation of the economy, considering the pandemic situation, still a need is felt to provide a boost to the economy. The economy is not doing too well, it's not growing too well and we need to increase the liquidity so that people have more funding available to increase the spending and thus stimulate the growth. Thereby, our monetary policy committee has decided to continue with its accommodative stance. By accommodative stance, I mean that RBI will continue to keep the interest rates low and continue with some of the liquidity measures taken in order to ensure a spending encouragement in the economy, thereby boosting our economy. So when the interest rates will be low, people can borrow easily, they will have fund available, they can invest it, they can spend it and thus per growth. So if I talk about the exchange, the time, uh, if I talk about the policy rates as of now, the repo rate, the reverse repo rate, the marginal standing facility rate, the bank rate, all have remained unchanged. So RBI has not changed these rates. So if I talk about the current rates, the repo rate is fixed at 4%, the reverse repo at 3.35, the MSF rate and the bank rate are also unchanged at 4.25%. So this is the current scenario of our policy rates which have remained unchanged to go with the accommodative stance. So RBI has also said the, uh, through its monetary policy committee that as long as it will be necessary to revive the economy, to spur growth, we will continue with the accommodative stance. So they will be taking all the necessary measures to make sure that our economy recovers, it revives and it continues to grow in this very situation of pandemic as well. And they will make sure that whatever decisions they are taking, it will not make uh, inflation go really very high. So they will also try to maintain our CPI, uh, our inflation within the target range. So what is the target range? The 4% in CPI with a band or a movement allowed up to 2% in both the sides. So if I have 4%, so it should not increase by 6%. And if I talk about the CPI projections for the coming year, they are also within this band only. So taking into consideration this, only the monetary policy committee has made these decisions. Other than that, the RBI has also decided to additionally buy 1.2 trillion worth of bonds in September through the GSAP. So earlier also a GSAP program came up where uh, some amount was already raised uh, through the GSAP. Now RBI has decided that it will further take up additional amount through these bonds by buying the bonds worth 1.2 trillion. So why RBI is so much insisting to do so? Because it wants to keep the interest rates low. 
when RBI will buy the bonds and the bonds will reduce in the economy, then it will increase the bond prices, which will reduce the interest rate. So if interest rates are low, the government can borrow at lower rate. And considering the present situation, there is a lot of need for government to borrow because they are having slowdown in tax collection and we are suffering a lot because of the pandemic so government needs funding for so it has to borrow so rbi is looking forward to reduce the interest rate so along with the omos it is also continuing with the gsap program then if i talk about the gdp projection which was earlier 10.5 percent that forecast estimate has also been changed to 9.5 percent considering the present situation of our economy. So this was about the monetary policy, what MPC decided when it comes to our monetary policy decisions. Now I'll talk about different steps which have been undertaken under the statement of development and regulatory policies. So if I talk about this statement, it covers different measures. In this very statement, these four measures have been covered that what actions has RBI taken to ensure more liquidity, to support the target sectors, then to ensure better regulation or supervision, then to deal with the financial markets and finally with respect to our payment systems. So some decisions have been taken in this very regard. So this is the overall view of this statement that what decisions have been taken. So if I talk about with respect to liquidity, an on tap liquidity window has been opened for contact intensive sectors, uh, liquidity facilities given to SIDB. Then with respect to regulation and supervision, they have increased the threshold under the resolution framework 2.0. Under financial markets, some decisions have been taken and so under the payment system. So let us discuss all of these one by one. First, talking about the measures taken to increase the liquidity in the economy. I have already told you we need to increase the liquidity so that people have funding available to spend because they have suffered a lot because of the pandemic. They need funding. Moreover, there is a need to provide more liquidity so that the, in order to ensure more growth, the spending can be encouraged, which can be done if people have the funds available. So if you remember, in the month of May, I took one session where I talked about a special liquidity window worth 50,000 crores for the health infrastructure and other such areas. So at that very time, we were not having enough medicine, medicines available for COVID, the oxygen uh, cylinders were not available and other healthcare infrastructure was lacking. So at that time, RBI came up with 50,000 crore window through which the banks can borrow and lend to these health infrastructure sectors but what decision has been taken now in this very statement the now they have decided to open a liquidity window worth rupees 15000 crores so ab ye wo decision to applicable tha wo to window open hai hai uske alawa another window has been opened where 15000 crore amount has been decided which banks can borrow for a period of 3 years at the repo rate and this facility is also open till 31st March 2022. But it is not for just the health infrastructure sector, but the main focus of this liquidity window is on the contact intensive sectors. Contact intensive sectors have suffered a lot because of the pandemic. Contact intensive sectors are some of the service sectors where in order to avail the service, we need to come in contact with them. Now, if we have to take the spa services, the beauty parlor services, or uh, the hotel services, tourism, or the bus operator services, we need to go to them. We need to come in contact with the hotel um, staff, the management, with the, in case of tourism also, we need to go out and meet others. So goes for the bus services or the car repair services. We need to take the things or we need to go and come in contact with others. Because of the pandemic, because of the COVID, it was not at all apt for us to come in contact with others because there were high chances that we will also catch the virus because of which the people because of which people stayed indoors and thus these contact intensive sectors have been hurt a lot. So in order to provide them the funding, RBI has launched this liquidity window wherein the banks can borrow and they can further lend to these contact intensive sectors. So these contact intensive sectors will include your hotels, restaurants, tourism sector, travel agents, tour operators, adventure heritage facilities, some aviation related facilities, private bus operators, car service operators, the rent a car service provider, event organizations, spa clinics, beauty parlors, saloons. So all these are the contact intensive sectors. Now, 
it might happen that banks would not be interested to lend to them so there is a need to give some incentive to the banks in order to encourage them to lend to these sectors so what incentive has been given by rbi to these banks so that they lend more to these contact intensive sectors so the incentive which is being offered is first of all the banks need to create a separate covid loan book whatever loans they are granting to different organizations under the uh, uh, during the situation of covid those loans need to be recorded in this book then in order to incentivize the banks the rbi has decided that whatever amount of loans under this covid loan book will be recorded then with uh, to that extent to the size of the loan book if banks have enough or excess of uh, funding still available then they can lend that to rbi and rbi will offer them better rates than the usual reverse repo rates so what is the thing jitna bhi aapka loan show ho raha hai aapki covid loan book mein utne had tak ka amount aap rbi ke paas deposit kar sakte ho agar aapke paas excess funding available hai to aur rbi aapko usme normal reverse repo rate se zyada return dega okay so repo rate se thoda kam aur reverse repo rate se zyada better rates pe aap ye loans rbi ko lend karke return you can have so this is the facility where excess of funding to the extent of size of your covid loan book can be uh, those extended in the form of loans to rbi and you can earn better returns than what your reverse repo rate offers so the it's not just for banks uh, who are availing the facility under this 15000 crore window but if there are some other banks also who are not taking the loans under this 15000 crore window but have the funds available and they lend it to these contact intensive sectors during this covid pandemic they are also eligible to avail this incentive all right so this was the first thing another initiative taken with respect to liquidity is the liquidity window for or the liquidity facility for small industries development bank of india if you remember in the month of april rbi extended 50000 crore support to our all india financial institutions where 25000 crore support was for nabard in order to encourage the agriculture activities 10000 crore support was for the national housing bank in order to support the housing sector and 15000 crore was decided for the sidb so that they can meet the funding requirements for our msme sector so now a decision has been taken where a more of 16000 crore window has been opened for sidb so sidb will be uh, under this sidb can avail the loans total amount which rbi has decided is 16000 crore and the uh, the loan can be taken for a period of up to one year at the repo rate this facility why is it useful the banks can the sidb uh, uh, can take the loans and can help the msme sectors so it will meet the funding requirements of your micro small and other medium enterprises it will meet their short term their medium term credit needs okay uh, spur investment in these sectors and help avail the credit facilities to those msmes who are there in such districts where enough credit facilities were not available so this window is going to support the msme sector by making funds available for their businesses so these were the measures taken under the liquidity thing second major area is the regulation and supervision and under that regard the rbi has enhanced the thresholds under resolution framework 2.0 if you remember on 5th of may uh, a decision was taken by rbi and i have covered it in one of the sessions as well that a resolution framework 2.0 is there under which the borrowers which include your individuals the small businesses and other msmes whose aggregate amount has not exceeded 25 crores and their uh, assets are still in the standard category they can get their restructuring done okay their stressed assets could be restructured and for this they should not have availed the restructuring in under previous schemes and uh, this was available for the related stress areas of the msmes and some non msme small businesses 
so now what rbi has decided that earlier the threshold was 25 crore jinka exposure 25 crore tak ka hai wohi borrowers restructuring ke liye apply kar sakte the but now rbi has increased this threshold to 50 crores so according to this now the borrowers which include your individuals your small businesses your msmes whose aggregate exposure will not exceed 50 crores and who have not availed the restructuring under earlier schemes also who are classified as standard as on 31st march they will be available uh, or eligible to be considered under the resolution framework 2.0 so restructuring facility will be available for them all other conditions are same only the amount from 25 crores has been increased to 50 crores now moving on to the next initiative which is with respect to the financial markets so two decisions have been taken in this very regard the first one is the placement of margins for government security transactions on behalf of the foreign portfolio investors you have seen recently we have had a lot of inflows from the fpi side okay and the government or the rbi keeps on taking such steps which encourages more foreign portfolio investments in india some decisions are taken to promote more ease of doing business to reduce the constraints faced by fpis and to encourage more fpis to come to india so the decision which has been taken now is that certain banks certain banks will be authorized the authorized dealer banks they can place the margins on behalf of the fpi clients so if foreign portfolio investors want to make the investments in certain government securities like in certain state development loans or in certain treasury bills then these authorized dealer banks whatever margin require margin needs to be deposited in order to facilitate your investment in certain areas so these margins on the behalf of fpi clients could be deposited by the authorized dealer banks this has been allowed under this step the second is facilitating the flexibility in liquidity management by issue of certificate of deposits so these are negotiable instruments which are issued where when you deposit the money in the bank you uh, are issued this so it is basically an indicator of an amount of deposit which you make in a bank jaise hum fd karte hain hum paisa deposit karte hain aise hi certificate of deposit hai we deposit some amount and bank in returns offer certificate of deposit which are negotiable as well so this facility has now been made available to the regional rural banks so the rrbs can now uh, issue the certificate of deposit and if they have enough funding available with them if they don't need more then they can also buy back the certificate of deposit so this step has been taken to ensure the liquidity when it comes to the regional rural banks in terms of utilizing the certificate of deposit so these two decisions have been taken with respect to financial markets moving further talking about the payment systems so the step which has been taken under it is the availability of the national automated clearing house natch on all days of the week so what is this if you remember this decision was taken where npci that is the national payments corporation of india it implemented this system for our banks for our financial institutions etc so natch stands for national automated clearing house ye hai kya what is it it is a kind of a web based solution which is going to help your banks your financial institutions your governments your corporates and how is it going to help it will facilitate the interbank or high volume electronic transactions usually the ones which are repetitive or periodic in nature for example the banks for example the government need to pay the subsidies or it needs to pay the salary of different employees the pension of different employees so for that we need a electronic system to facilitate such transactions to transfer that amount moreover we pay the electricity bills the water bills so collection of all those payment for that also we need a proper system so that the amount properly reaches the government accounts so natch is that system okay it will help in the bulk transactions when it comes to distributing the subsidies dividends interest salary pension or collections of the payments in the form of telephone bills electricity bills water loan etc so all those things will be facilitated by this system and uh, government has been using this system a lot to grant the subsidies during covid as well this system was available only on days when banks were functional daily ye facility available nahi hoti thi to aapko weekends pe agar amount transfer karna hai pay karna hai to wo is facility ke under nahi ho pata tha 
so now nat uh, it has been decided that nat will be available on all days of the week throughout the year so that uh, the people can take the advantage of it and utilize that properly in the interest of customer convenience to take advantage of the availability of rtgs on all days this decision has been taken recently rtgs was also made 24/7 so it will help to support that as well so these are some decisions which have been taken under our monetary policy and our, our statement on your regulatory aspects and the development aspects so moving to the questions now the first one says identify the statements correctly related to rbi's bi monthly policy which has been released so the first statement is incorrect because river is the repo rate is not 3% remaining two are correct so answer is option d moving to question number 2 RBI has come up with a separate liquidity window of fifteen thousand crore for three-year time period at repo rate for contact in intensive sectors. Which incentive is being offered to the banks to encourage lending to these sectors? The answer is option A. As I've already told you, banks can park their surplus liquidity to the si extent of size of their COVID loan book, and the rate will be offered will be below the repo rate but higher than the reverse repo rate. So this statement is correct. Moving on to question number three, what is the objective behind RBI special liquidity window of sixteen thousand crores to SIDB? The answer to this question is option C. That it is done to meet the funding requirement of MSMEs. Moving on to last question of the day, Dash system can be used for making bulk transactions towards distribution of subsidy, dividend, or collection of your payments. I have just discussed discussed the Dash system is the answer to this question so this was all for today's session please make a note of all such things what rbi is doing amid the covid what kind of policies it, is it making it can be really helpful for you when it comes to answering the questions during the interviews or when it comes to uh, making a good answer for your descriptive part as well so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much